The pistons and the associated rods are a nice simple design and shouldn't be too much of a challenge to machine. Don's design does call out a quarter inch piston rod in stainless steel. I'll be going with 6mm which of course will impact on the threaded sections at both ends so for those I'll go with M6 fine or M6 by 0.75. Don doesn't actually give any detail for the crosshead connection so I'm going to run with threading it as I've just said at M6 fine. The other consideration that is really key to these is making sure that everything is concentric so we'll cover that off as I go through making them. For the pistons I'll be using cast iron and I've got a nice big lump in the three jaw here. This is more than big enough for me to make two pistons out of. As always the first job is to face off one end. For the OD I'm going to be looking for a close fit into the bores I've already machined. So that was 33.04 and 33.02 millimeters. I'm not looking to turn those final ODs just yet. So instead I just put on a couple of skim cuts to get under the surface. Next I centre drill and drill out to M6 fine tapping size which is 5.2 millimeters. I go in deep enough for two pistons and then tap accordingly but I'm only cutting the thread for the first of the two pistons at this time. I don't need the hole through the piston threaded for its full length just five millimeters at the top end so I open out the rest of it using a six mil stub drill. I'm not showing the machining of the piston rods each one is just a length of 6mm stainless bar with 18mm threaded at the crosshead end and 5mm at the piston end. After a quick test fit with the piston rod, I cut the first of the two pistons off the stock. I did try parting it off but I got so much chatter that in the end I just resorted to the hacksaw. Although the rod is a very tight fit in the piston, I do also use some Loctite 648. I really don't want this moving. I did check and Loctite 648 is good up to 175 degrees centigrade, which may be borderline for steam at 80 PSI, but I think I'll be okay. You'll see here that I'm measuring the stick out on the rod. This is because I've made the rod to the final length and therefore need to ensure that it's positioned correctly with respect to the piston. Ultimately I'm looking for 180 millimeters from the top of the piston to the end of the rod but as I've not yet faced off the piston I have to measure against the face that is available. After leaving some time for the Loctite to go off I can now get on and turn the final dimensions on the piston and to do so I clamp the piston by the piston rod using a collet chuck. This is key to give me the concentricity I mentioned earlier. First I face off the piston to length, 11.1mm in my case, and then move on to turning the outside diameter. This will be a line to the bore of the cylinder, so for the left hand cylinder which is 33.04mm I need to turn the piston to that diameter. In fact I go under by 0.01mm. I am doing this with multiple shallow cuts and finish off with some memory to bring it in that final little amount. To cut the groove for the packing in the cylinders, I'm using a parting off tool that I've modified. I've reduced its thickness from 3.2mm down to 2mm and I've also shortened it so I've not got so much to stick out. Both of these to reduce the chance of chatter occurring. I start by positioning the tool in the middle of the piston. I am actually working off my DRO, having touched off on the front, but it doesn't really matter at this point. To suit the packing I'm looking for a groove quarter inch square, so 6.36 in my world. With that in mind I initially take the cut into a depth of 4mm and then start to work on widening the groove. And by widening I do mean that I retract the top slide, move the carriage across to the left or right and then plunge back in. I'm not side loading my form tool. Once the groove is big enough for me to get my calipers in, I measure the distance from the front face of the piston to the groove which needs to be 2.37 millimeters. So moving forwards, I use that as my reference, first getting that right and then getting the width of the groove right. From here on, it's more of the same using lots of light cuts until I get the groove to both the right depth and the right thickness. You may have noticed that when I first started this cut, I did get a little bit of chatter, but I'm pleased to say that soon passed. It 
it did occur to me that maybe the groove shouldn't be the full quarter inch deep and that is borne out when I actually fit the packing in place as it sits just below the top of the groove so that's rather annoying but it'd be an easy fix to put some additional packing below this quarter inch square stuff. And here we have one completed piston and piston rod assembly. When I made the cross heads I did leave the stubs for the piston rods unfinished. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, Don doesn't give much in the way of information as to how to connect the two parts. As we've already seen, I've threaded the piston rod with M6 fine for a length of 18mm, so now I need to drill and tap the cross heads accordingly. And when I do so, it's important that that hole is central with respect to the body, and in particular the slide bar faces of the cross head. So I clamp one of the cross heads in the machine vise using a 345 block to ensure it's set vertically, and use the wiggler to establish the centre. But do note I'm working off the cross head body and not the stub. And then with the centre established, it's a simple job to centre drill, drill out to tapping size, and then tap the thread through the stub. In fact, I go right through into the recess of the cross head body. I also made a couple of locking nuts using some 38 hex bar. It does all appear to be coming together quite nicely, with no evidence on either side that the cross heads are going to bind in the slide bars, or that there is any binding with the piston, the rod, the covers, the gland, and the cross head. So I'm feeling quite comfortable at this stage. However, I did say in the last video that I would talk a little bit about errors in this video. I'm not actually going to do that, but there is a major issue about to hit me, which we'll cover off in the next video when I get into making the motion brackets. And on that ominous note, I'll say thanks for watching.